Recently, Salesforce started a broad pilot of its Salesforce DX tooling technology. I've been fortunate enough to be part of that pilot, and one of the things I've been doing as I've worked through uh, the materials is I've been integrating Salesforce DX uh, in Illuminated Cloud. Uh, the goal is a very, very tight integration. Um, as normal, um, I kind of work through these things uh, in phases and release each phase as I, as I think it gets to a point where I think people would find it useful. Um, and so one of the things I'd like to do is show um, some of the workflows that are enabled by the first set of enhancements I've made to Illuminated Cloud for Salesforce DX. I, I think a, a good place to start would be to show um, how you configure Illuminated Cloud to, uh, to actually be able to talk to Salesforce DX tooling. So I've brought up the standard um, global configuration for Illuminated Cloud and you can see that there's a new field. and all you need to do is um, have installed the Salesforce DX executable and by the way I provided a convenient uh, link that will take you to the platform specific uh, distribution of that. Of course you do need to be in the pilot right now to be able to actually use it uh, and then once installed uh, all you need to do is uh, is browse to the actual um, primary executable for it and just register it with Illuminated Cloud. And so um, let's go ahead and see what it means to create a new project. Um, one of the things that's important here is that uh, a big paradigm shift with uh, with, with Salesforce DX is that your org is no longer the uh, main repository for your for your metadata. Um, it is um, it is intended to be a workspace and uh, your version control system is intended to be the single source of truth for your for your metadata. Um, it's a major change from the way that things have worked in the past. Um, and so what we're going to do is create a new project um, based upon uh, some metadata that's actually out in Git. Uh, this happens to be one of the onboarding test projects for the Salesforce DX um, initial documentation. So right now this is being pulled down from Git. You can see that the IDE is prompting to create a project off of it and you can see that Illuminated Cloud has realized that there are no Illuminated Cloud project files. This was just pulled raw out of uh, out of GitHub. So what it wants to do is, is uh, set this project up to be used with Illuminated Cloud. So the first thing it wants to do is is um, associate a connection, an org effectively, with this metadata. And so we'll just uh, drop down here and look at some of the connections. And one thing you'll notice is some of these connections have a DX icon beside them. Uh, those are not connections that have been explicitly configured within Illuminated Cloud. Uh, those were found by um, Illuminated Cloud speaking to the Salesforce DX tooling and seeing the the, uh, the hub org and the scratch orgs that have been created and things like that and getting enough information to be able to connect to those from um, Salesforce DX tooling. And so I'm going to choose this scratch org and um, go ahead and say OK and now what uh, it's going to do is convert the project to be an Illuminated Cloud project. It's going to come back up and it's saying there's a few other things we need to do and the next thing that it shows is uh, perhaps one of uh, the most uh, compelling new features or, or exciting new features of Salesforce DX and that is a uh, huge level of flexibility in the way that you can organize your projects in the local file system. Traditionally, you've had a single source root, the source, SRC directory, and uh, obviously subdirectories for each metadata type and then your actual metadata files under that. Um, now there's actually a workspace file, it's a JSON file that allows you to, uh, to specify multiple project routes. And within each one of those, uh, you can actually have distinct source routes, for example, for product code versus test codes, like your Apex test classes. So um, uh, Illuminated Cloud uh, automatically looks at that workspace configuration and figures out what the project structure should look like. And so we'll accept that. And now what it's going to do is um, use the the connection that it found by talking to Salesforce DX and it's going to go connect to it using OAuth and if it has to refresh the uh, OAuth access token it will. It's also going to look for the uh, the metadata in the local file system and figure out if it should update the subscription which it's just done. And so now it's generating the offline symbol table in the background which will give us completion, integrated API documentation and all that and uh, when this gets done we'll actually have a usable project. So in just a moment uh, this will finish and we'll uh, navigate around take a look at how this works and uh, also take a look at the relationship between Illuminated Cloud's tooling, so how it does uh, deployment, retrieval, and uh, unit testing and code coverage and things like that. And I'll talk about the relationship now and in the future with the Salesforce DX CLI tooling. So um, it's finished uh, generating the offline symbol table. Um, We'll go ahead and let it uh, generate the indices of everything that it just did, where it pulled down metadata, where it generated the OST, and then we'll actually start playing with the project. Now, um, we'll also show in just a moment um, how we can drop down to the CLI and use the CLI until I integrate some of these CLI operations like creating workspaces and creating um, scratch orgs and things like that as first class features. All right, so let's just go ahead and navigate to some code. So um, demo, demo controller, okay, we've got a couple classes here. Um, I'll go ahead and show where these are in the um, 
project structure and as I already mentioned there's a couple of different source routes here uh, you can see this one's blue so that's a product source route you can see this one's green that's a test source route test classes product classes uh, that's just how they were checked out of Git, but uh, illuminated cloud automatically detected that and you can see there's one other source route up here where the uh, the workspace um, the scratch orgs basically their their uh, JSON definitions are um, and so you can easily navigate to those and so let's take a look I mean you know we can we can bring up our uh, uh, API documentation here um, you know it's all fully integrated uh, as always uh, we can go over here navigate we can run tests uh, so we'll just go ahead and say run this test this is uh, illuminated clouds test runner so it just ran that test uh, we can navigate back over here and we can show integrated code coverage and so there you can see in the gutter the code coverage you can see the aggregates over here um, we'll go ahead and uh, close this up um, I'll save this file um, let's make a small change so I'll go ahead and save this file and you can see down here that it's deploying and it deployed in about 1.2 seconds um, and that is Illuminated Cloud's uh, tooling API deployer so that's not using the CLI to do that and uh, similarly I can deploy here and uh, it you can see that it even though there are multiple source routes it considers it one uh, holistic metadata uh, base and so uh, we can go and deploy everything in the project in this case so it's going to deploy this um, using the uh, metadata API because it's also deploying um, actually use the tooling API because it's deploying Apex and Visual Force uh, which are can be handled by a metadata container so that all deployed uh, you know the tool windows all work as you'd expect so you can see up here it's using the um, DX uh, connection and we'll just say uh, you know user info dot get organization name print that out show it that all works fine we'll bring up a uh, query window run a SQL query so we'll say select star and we'll say from account and um, we ought to be able to in just a moment see all the accounts that have been loaded into the scratch org and uh, we can take a look at the uh, the logs that are in the system um, we can bring up uh, you know any of the logs so everything works as you would expect and again you can in each case you can see that this is our DX scratch org um, and so um, you can also drop down and and play with the um, DXCLI using the integrated terminal emulator of, of, of IntelliJ IDEA. So I have it configured here to use um, to use Sigwin Bash. Obviously, if you're on a uh, Mac or if you're on a Linux system, uh, you know you can you can use the native shells there. And, and by default uh, on Windows, it's going to use Command.exe. I just prefer to use this. So it started me in the project directory, and I can say SFDX uh, force org list, and it'll give me a list of orgs. Um, let's go ahead and move this up a little bit and um, then I can do sfdx uh, force org describe uh, let's see slash dash u um, sfdx1 and uh, we can take a look here at uh, the information about this this is by the way how um, how it's actually connecting um, to the orgs this is how it's sourcing its connections and connecting and if we want we can do sfdx um, force source push dash uh, u sfdx1 I think this will actually show conflicts because I just deployed from within the IDE so the um, the status information here is stale relative to what I just did in the IDE so let's take a look it's going to go do a source push and it will probably come back with a series of conflicts and it did so that's great um, and so um, you know as you can see you can easily switch back and forth I'm gonna be actually adding a palette of these commands uh, and integrating them very tightly so that uh, you can use them from directly within the IDE so creating a new workspace will actually happen just like you would create a new project creating a new scratch org will be like creating a new connection um, if you want to do uh, push pull those types of operations um, at minimally you'll be able to do them by just choosing uh, from a palette of CLI operations I may actually make it so that the standard um, uh, deploy retrieve um, key bindings and such as actions if you're using a DX org and you choose to do this it'll just use those, those CLI actions but I do like the fine grain control that you actually get um, from the standard tooling anyway uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, what's there to start and um, and an idea of where I'm planning on taking it um, so keep an eye out for future builds but uh, this will be available uh, I hopefully uh, Monday or Tuesday of this week for you to play with start giving feedback uh, thanks a lot